Hey guys, Dark Skeleton here, and something I've been wondering about with so many decks hitting the matchmaking system is whether players are really thinking through their card choices at a deep level, or if they're simply going online and net decking. I think since the beta, the average player has actually gotten quite a bit better at making plays and anticipating secrets, but it seems with every expansion there are a few obvious deck combinations that people universally just roll with. For instance, on the ladder right now, mechs have pretty much flooded everything at the lower ranks of play. You have a bunch of mech aggro decks that splash the freeze cards. Um, aggro mech shamans are really popular and quite strong, I might add, with that 3-2 weapon for 3. And there's even a lot of priests using mech warpers now to dump their hand of mech cards. In addition to those, you get a few other non-mech decks which are still synergetic like the Shaman Murloc or the Muster for Battle Quartermaster Paladins which people are pretty much taking full advantage of. There are decks that at least look okay on paper, and a lot of people were really talking a bunch about them uh, before it even came out. One of those people obviously being me with all those card first impressions. Now I can't blame them at all for playing those decks, especially in ranked play. Uh, while there might be better decks out there in the higher ranks, those fairly obvious synergy decks do have early game board presence, and it just kind of makes me wonder, how they all came to the conclusion to run mech heavy decks, or combinations like Quartermaster plus Muster for Battle. Uh, I mean, was the synergy so obvious that people realize what they can do with the decks, without even giving it a second thought? And then do these guys have the same thought as the next five people, causing each match to be very very similar, a lot of mech, and then if you run it into a Paladin you know they're running Quartermaster. Or are people doing a totally reasonable thing and just going online and net decking off of sites like Hearthpone to find which are the best legend decks and trying to copy whatever the pros are doing? People totally want to win, and I get that. It just irks me a little bit that for the sake of having a strong chance of winning, people essentially have to play optimally. That often means throwing out most of your creativity right out the window and playing the strongest decks that others have pretty much mathed out to prove that these decks will have a high win percentage. Other games really work the same way though. In any MOBA game, if you pick a subpar champion or you use an unusual item build, uh, then you're likely to get smashed by a few other players uh, without playing significantly better than them. If you want to be the creative guy, you have to be playing really, really well because you're already at a disadvantage. It seems that wherever there's a system, there are optimal paths to victory. Goblins vs Gnomes definitely increases the variety we can work with, more cards tend to do that, which I like a lot. Just kind of unfortunate that playing the way you want to play and being competitive are often completely opposed with each other. Now before I go, I want to ask you guys about one card, Trogs or the Earthinator. I've been seeing this card pop up in Control Priests, I've seen Amaz use it on his uh, livestream for Hearthstone. And uh, what do you guys think? Is this a insanely good card? I mean, if it's good enough for a Maz, it must be pretty good. When I was playing a Control Giants Mage, that was a big issue for me because I had a lot of spells. You play a spell to remove it and it gives you another guy. Do you think he has like a permanent spot in Priest or something like that? I, I don't have one, so I haven't gotten to play with him yet, but he's interesting to say the least. Anyway, I've been Dark Skeleton. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you all next time.